All right, well, um, how you guys, y'all doing today? Just gonna go over a few things I want to share with you guys today. I'm painting this uh, um, 2012 Ricky Stenhouse um, Ranchers Tender Beef Customs. I'm working with this Colonial Red. I think this is a pretty good match to the. It's kind of a deeper red, not a not an apple red, but a deeper red base color and um, I've already painted the under undersides yesterday and I'm gonna add uh, this top coat here so I've um, been shaking this up wash my hands so everything's clean good to go uh, we'll uh, we'll paint these so let's do that probably good so a lot of times with this with this paint and primer one coat is good I mean we'll see how it dries and uh, we'll look it over to make sure that it's pretty um, it's got a pretty good coverage but um but yeah I think that looks pretty good let's bring them over to here my little transporter I've let it dry on the wood before but it will sometimes stick when I do that and so I like to set it on it's a perfect size really uh, I like to set it on these little quarter ounce bottles of paint that I've had over the years and and uh, just let it rest there and yeah um, you may wonder why I don't just paint it on top of these things well um, I don't know it this would get covered with paint and sometimes I use them so um, it's just easier for me uh, to paint them over here on these boards uh, sometimes I will put them up there and paint them there um, but uh, I like to let them dry on the other side where um, where I have the rest of the car together and, and just carefully set it down there so yeah I think this is put this top coat on last night it's pretty good uh, again one coat on the bottom and it's you know I don't say it's a heavy coat but but uh, um, one coat on the top and, and it looks pretty good this side doesn't look as thick as the other side but but it's 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 covered and uh, so yeah that looks pretty good again waiting for decals to show up for this uh, Best Buy 2012 Best Buy cars so yeah um, I like to use this box. It's just a suspended area. I've got it straight underneath this uh, kind of a, it's a spotlight uh, that comes straight down over here, so I get you know a good visibility on uh, on what I'm painting. And um, I have, and you know, these are just some old bl blocks of wood that I have, and just little pieces of uh, real thin wood there. Um, I use this for doing the black priming and that for the white priming and that's you know that's pretty much pretty much my little paint area um, it's a fairly large basement that I have here unfinished basement so it's uh, you know, it's got plenty of uh, air there's not a lot of fumes that will build up down here and they dissipate pretty quickly I'm not too concerned about it, like having a paint booth and all that kind of stuff so um yeah so got that done 
I am currently kind of debating how I want to prime this. Uh, this again is the 2007 uh, number 78 Kenny Wallace cars. Um, they're actually Chevys uh, that I'm making. And um, I think I'm going to use this I have this Model Master Burgundy Red Metallic. It's exactly what it is. Got it at Hobby Lobby. You can see that great price of six dollars and nineteen cents. What a steal! Um, but this is a this is a, a Burgundy Red Metallic. I've used it before. On um, trying to think what car I painted, but it it's not very thick. So I'm probably going to have to. Oh, I'm definitely going to have to use two coats of paint. And what I've learned with with this, you definitely have to prime it. You can't um, you can't just spray this right onto the metal. You have to prime it first. I've had success using um, a white primer or the or the black primer. The black primer, the the testers, some of these some of these paints, especially like this one. This was a uh, a red uh, gloss custom red uh, color. It doesn't show up very well on the black primer. So I'll probably do a white primer and then do two coats of this. And um, and then, yeah, and then the, the second color I mentioned in my video the other day was I'll use this Go Mango uh, Model Masters Go Mango color, which is a pretty good match to the orange that shows up in that car. So that'll be a, um, that'll be a fun challenging custom to make don't get too many of those with the dual um, dual coated um, or dual colored car that doesn't come with at least one set of the decals covering the one color um, yeah so that's what's going on there I finished finished working this black visine it's all decaled uh, just kind of letting them set it hasn't quite been 24 hours since I finished decaling it um, it's hood open uh, real nice, real nice car for uh, my collection, and um, that will uh, that will get at least five coats of the clear sealer. Um, one of the things with these hood open cars, that you kind of have to watch when you take it all apart. You have to drill out all that stuff, and then you go to put it back together. The hood open, the trunk open, it will sometimes rub like I see a little spot where it rubbed here and I see a little spot where it rubbed over here and you know unfortunately that's just the way it is it's not as tight as when it was before I took it all apart so I have to probably go in and touch that up with a little bit of the black um, and then you know just over time unfortunately you know there's a little bit of rub it's gonna create um, a little bit of um, of a little scar or mark. Um, you know, what are you going to do? Um, so that's that. I did want to share with you guys. I had a video a few weeks back where I kind of went over some of my things that I do in the morning um, as I've gotten older in my life, and I've gotten um, just kind of taken a little turn here uh, for um, from from the diecast hobby that I do. I shared with you how I do four things in the morning. Um, I'll sing a song. I'll uh, spend some time in prayer. This is my little prayer rug. Uh, I've got a prayer plan. I'll read my devotional, um, which is over here. Uh, usually sitting in this chair, comfortable, old. This thing's probably 25 years old. Uh, lazy boy recliner. And then I'll I'll read um, I'll read a passage of scripture. Um, that's real important to me, and um, uh, very important for uh, uh, I just think having a daily routine of doing things and and kind of uh, you know getting your mind right, uh, getting your day uh, headed in the right direction from the get go. Um, another thing that I've started to do that I think is important that I wanted to share with you guys come over to this part of the gra uh, garage this part of the basement that I haven't showed you guys yet but 
When I was in college, I took a class called Conditioning for Life. And it was a class about, you know, running, lifting weights, exercising, and eating right, um, and trying to, um, you know, just set yourself up physically for a long and, you know, high quality, I won't say high quality, but a quality life. Um, over the years, I've kind of come and gone with that. Um, I'm definitely probably overweight as, a, as an adult male. But a few years ago, I started getting back into the routine of lifting weights. And I try to run as well. I try to run, when I say run, jog, um, uh, a couple times a week. And I try to lift at least three or four times a week. And when I say lift, um, just real quick what I do is uh, that's my shoulder press bar. I also will, and it's not a lot of weight, um, but I'll also do uh, some squats and calf raises with that board there. Um, these are my little dumbbells for, um, I do shoulder shrugs with that. I do curls and tricep extensions and I'll do um, uh, flies. Uh, and of course my bench. Um, and what's nice about this is I'll, I'll adjust it to where I can do an inclined bench. But just, again, I think it's so important spiritually to spend time with God and reading the scriptures. And also I think physically if we can take care of our bodies, um, we just feel better. Um, we retain that muscle mass and, um, and we have energy for the day. Um, one of my Achilles heels has been my eating habits. Um, you've probably seen me with some sodas on my uh, NASCAR custom things, but I, I'm trying to limit that. I, I'm not going to get rid of it, um, but I'm trying to limit my soda, and then I'm I'm also trying to limit my dairy now um, because I'm just I'm just overweight and I'm trying to uh, to cut back on on my portion sizes and some of the things that I've been eating. Trying also, this is so difficult because I love pizza. I'm trying to cut back on pizza. And so when we get pizza as a family, I'm trying to limit myself to two pieces as opposed to like four. And so, um, you know, just again, just trying to be a little bit more responsible with my body that God's given me. So I just wanted to share that with you guys for what it's worth um, and, uh, and encourage you, you know, I think lifting for life is important. You know, keeping that muscle mass, and as you get older, and uh, and you know, through your 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s on, you can continue to um, uh, uh, to have the muscle mass that you need in order to do whatever uh, that uh, God's calling you to do. Um, so that's what's going on there. Not much else from a custom perspective. I I want to close the video with um, just a just a word of um, uh, of scripture I enjoy reading the scriptures and I think I said this in a video a few weeks back but there always seems to be something that just kind of sticks out uh, a word or something that that um, uh, will uh, be something that I hadn't seen before and so one of the things that I've been reading um, I've been reading through uh, the New Testament, uh, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and now I'm in 1 Thessalonians. Um, and God kind of showed me some things uh, with regard to this. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians were written by the Apostle Paul, and he was writing them, most people believe, from a prison cell where he was being held because he was preaching the gospel. Um, and as I was reading through Ephesians, I came across Ephesians chapter 6 and verses um, 18, 19, and 20. I've got to hear my Bible. Obviously, you guys can read it up. There's no reason to kind of show the camera too closely to it. But Ephesians 6 and verse 18, you know, he's encouraging the, the Ephesian believers to pray. He says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So as he's encouraging them to pray, he says in verse 19 and 20, and then he says, and for me. So here, the, the Apostle Paul, the missionary Paul, 
what what does he want people to pray for him for when he's in this prison cell? And he says, it's interesting, and he says, and for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. And so you break that down, there's really two things he's praying for, that he would have a utterance or a word given to him that he could share with other people about the gospel and that he may share that message boldly. And I was thinking, wow, you know, here's this guy in prison, separated from his family, separated from the people that love him, and, and, um, and, and he's, his freedom is, is taken away from him under house arrest. And you would think he would pray for his health, he would pray for, you know, release, but he doesn't. He prays that he would have a word and that he would share that word boldly. And I was just amazed by that. The other interesting thing, um, Ephesians compares to the book of Colossians as well. And Colossians is very, you know, written around the same time. Colossians says almost the same thing when Paul writes to the Christians at Colossae. He says in chapter 4, verse 2, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. And he says, with all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. So, Ephesians 6, Colossians 4, God's trying to show the priority. It's not that we shouldn't pray for people that are sick or pray for other things, but his focus was on getting the gospel to people and doing it in a bold and unashamed way. And that's, that's very convicting to me. I hope it challenges you um, to consider you know, the priorities, priorities of your life and how we need to be focused on sharing the great, wonderful news of Jesus Christ with other people. All right, you guys, have a wonderful and blessed day. Uh, God bless.